Hello my soccer universe, right after the fact, just Wolves against Spurs finished about uh, 45 minutes ago, so we do another quick reaction video on this round 15 of the Premier League, um, where actually, due to it being the only thing that's on TV, uh, Sock Soccer was at the moment, actually saw quite some, but I haven't seen uh, highlights of everything, or you know, I saw I think I saw four games full and then a few others half and a little bit highlights. So yeah, wearing Arsenal, they are the big winners. They also prove again, yes, I should have a second Arsenal jersey because all the other three teams that I they have doubles, they didn't perform all that well. So yeah, um, there's an Arsenal back there, but we have Arsenal here and we'll see where they would fall on this wall here very, very soon. Okay. Headlines for uh, this week. I think I saw a lot of draws. I mean, basically all the matches that I didn't see did not end in a draw <laughs> in many ways, except for one or two. But there were five draws in nine games. I think that's pretty remarkable. And that allowed again for quite a few shifts in the um, um, standings uh, as well. The biggest story, of course, is uh, that probably Arsenal has given a big sign of life and turning now Chelsea into the Chaos Club or into the clubbing crisis, although I never like it. We have just a little bit played. It's not a crisis yet. Neither it was for Arsenal, although the results were not good, nor is it now for Chelsea. Uh, yes, there you can always have a little slump for a month or so, and then if, if it continues from there on, then we are in trouble. Um, we also had a rather exciting draw between Leicester and Man United. Uh, two teams that seem to be set to um, continue uh, their good run in this uh, season. And then uh, two late goals, Rob Liverpool and Spurs of wins, which last headline allows Everton actually to scoop up into second. And we have the two Liverpool teams sitting at top of the table rather interestingly. Let's look briefly at the games. I thought that Leicester Manchester United, especially in the first half, was a really good game uh, and I most of the time felt that United was the better team, uh, was more dangerous, had more proactive style. Um, no, not proactive, but you know, was uh, was more threatening to score. I think that's, that's the proper way to say it. Um, I should have scored right away when the, how Rashford didn't put the ball, I think in the first or sex, the second minute into the net uh, escapes me. But they get the goal through a nice Fernandes, uh, Fernandes pass to Rashford who buries in the 23rd. But that actually then got Leicester a little bit going and um, not for the first time, Leicester can hit back. Uh, the, uh, the game goes on a little bit, Leicester gets into the game and Madison assists Harvey Barnes to get the equalizer and I have to say that towards the end of the half game was rather level and I think um, uh, the draw was uh, quite right. In the second half I do have to say that it was a little bit of a more um, you know chaotic affair on, the, uh, on one side on the other um, it was still United that were a little bit more dangerous and in the 60th, just when Leicester was about to really take control of the game, they launched two count counter attacks. The first one I think is again uh, missed by Rashford and the second one Martial puts in, but he is uh, by a hair offside. When I saw the replay, I thought, no, this is not of offside. And then they put, put in the lines and yeah, maybe probably he could have been offside. So it was one of one of those. And then Solskjaer makes an inspired substitution in 75th by bringing on Cavani for Martial. And Cavani, with a really nice pass, plays it on, onto Fernandes, who makes it 2-1. And at that point, I really thought, yeah, Manchester United has won it. They will not um, let Leicester back into the game. However, they didn't. <laughs> they did. Uh, I use Perez plays it into the uh, you know one two and puts it into the box where Jamie Vardy uh, heads it onto Tuan Zebe and it's an on goal. I mean, he deflects it into the net. The action was still coming from Vardy, and it ends to two. And I think late on Leicester probably could have won it, but that would have been a little bit too much. But 2-2 two -two draw between two really good sides um, that I think both 
ha will have a say uh, in the next season, um, you know, for finishing into the Champions League spots. I'm not saying they will, but uh, they have a good chance of finishing there. Um, Aston Villa gets a rather surprising three, no, not surprising, but the way it happens, it gets a 3 0 win over Crystal Palace. You know, Crystal Palace just got um, drowned by uh, Liverpool with seven goals. Uh, Aston Villa gets an early goal, but then Tyron Minx is getting sent off with a yellow red in the 45th, so they have to play this entire second half. A man down with a goal up, and they get two more goals uh, through House and El Ghazi. So, rather um, com convincing. I saw Fulham against Southampton uh, largely. I thought the Southampton was mostly the better team. They had a huge miss. I think there was a free kick that he, either was saved or hit the post, and it fell right at the Southampton player who just has to pull it in and then suddenly cannot connect into, into the empty net. Very late on, uh, also, we thought that. Um, a goal for Southampton was scored, alas, it was taken off for offside, rightfully so. And then we already had Arsenal Chelsea, uh, where at the beginning Arsenal came out and really um, uh, tried to create chances, but the longer the game went on, I really thought that Chelsea got a little bit uh, the better of the game. That was until um, a penalty was called and like I said, steps up and gives Arsenal the 1-0 lead. That changed the game. I'm not saying that our Chelsea were great, uh, neither Arsenal were uh, bad. I just uh, thought that um, Chelsea actually had a, had the game with all the modest ways to have it. They had it, a little, they had it more or less under control, but they uh, give up a rather unnecessary penalty. And I think it was a pullback in the box. I mean, how they... Um, uh, complained about that, like I said, can uh, convert it. And then the neck breaker for Chelsea was a free kick by Shaka, wonderfully taken, I have to say. Um, that went in in the 44th for 2 0. Arsenal really looking good at that point. Second half, um, Jorginho came, came in for Kovacic, Hudson Doyle came on for Werner, who both did not have all the greatest games overall. And uh, it seemed like for a long time, yeah, that the game is settling on, you know, it says 2 2 2 nil, no side, uh, you know, one doesn't want to, the, the, uh, or, and the other one cannot really do so, so something. Uh, but then Saka, and I'm not sure if he aimed for it, in the 56th uh, cross in, or a shot in, and it, you know, it curves outwards, but into the net. Really nice, it's, it's a great goal to see, but I'm not sure how much intention was in there. And it's 3 0 Arsenal and Chelsea. No, they did not look good. I thought for the most of the game, uh, then on that it, Arsenal was closer to the fourth than Chelsea was ever to getting a consolation goal. However, they get it. Uh, Hudson and Doy cross in, Tim Abraham chests it in. Overall, he claims immediately was not offside, was initially called offside. But uh, if you look at it, it was such a fractional uh, thing. I thought this was not the offside that he thought there was was because the pass he thought went backward, which it uh, clearly did not. And then uh, Chelsea got even the huge chance in stoppage time to get back into the game uh, with a penalty. But Jorginho does the stupid uh, hoppity hop uh, penalty. I think he now got figured out that the goalkeepers just have to train on that sequence. And Leno can say makes a nice uh, good save, but uh, it was. Uh, not a hard shot and not very well placed either and in that case you know it ends 3-1 and I think Arsenal fully deserved that win and now I hear Arteta can celebrate I don't I don't think so they have two more games where they need to show that this win was not just um, uh, one a uh, one-off, uh, but Chelsea, yeah, they have not been looking good either this month. So yeah, uh, everyone says now the trouble goes from Arsenal to Chelsea. Please take a deep breath. Uh, everyone hold back. Uh, Man City, Newcastle, I was never, uh, pouring rain, uh, but there was never really a doubt about the outcome. Uh, I liked how Sterling found Gundogan for the first goal uh, to pull it in, the second goal through Ferran Torres. Yeah, ball falls to him, he pulled, he pulled it in, and Sergio Aguero had a big chance, but I think New Newcastle never really threatened. So that was an easy 2-0 win for Manchester City, and as we'll see, has 
actually some implication for the standings. I didn't see anything of Everton's winning against Sheffield United, only that the goal by Sigurdsson came late in the 80th minute, but Everton getting a little bit of a run again, although Sheffield United is a team that Everton just has to beat at the moment. Then uh, Leeds, Burnley, uh, win for Leeds again. Um, Burnley, I think they won two, 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 two in a row now, they're going down, um, losing again. Then West Ham didn't show actually up in the first uh, half there. I mean, I saw a little bit at the end and then some highlights. Uh, Neil Mopek giving uh, Brighton uh, the deserved lead um, um, there. However, uh, Johnson can pull them back, then Dunk gives uh, Brighton the lead, lead again, and um, but if they could different, uh, defend set pieces, uh, corner kick and Suchik heads it in. It was a rather weird goal because it comes off the Brighton defender directly on the head of Suchik. Uh, when, when you look at it, you think the ball gets suddenly uh, some extra dunk, 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 like a, a pinball in, in a way. So West Ham, Brighton finishes 2-2. And then I was really set for, yeah, let's see, Liverpool, Liverpool score a few. Uh, you know, it was not the, the most important game, but I, th I thought after the score, score seven, let, let's see how it will go against West Brom, uh, who is now the team. And again, it's nothing personal against West Brom. I just don't like how the ownership got rid of uh, Bilic and the whole uh, Sam Allardyce thing. So I want them to be get relegated uh, because I I think they just were on the way up any anyway and Sadio Mane with a really greatly taken goal uh, Matip assist uh, gives uh, Liverpool the lead they have I think almost 80% of the ball uh, control the game but don't really have any more chances and second half was I mean or, or in the first half very very, very, very late on there was a real uh, serious counter-attack by um, West Brom that could have given them the equalizer in the second half I mean the first chance yeah uh, Henderson uh, pulls it wide but then the game got a little bit more open yes Liverpool controlled more but uh, they barely had shots or uh, even shots on goal so uh, that was rather remarkable um, and West Brom was threatening on the occasion um, and then they get the equalizer after a uh, call ball goes to Pereira out who then crosses into the box where uh, Jai heads it onto the post and then uh, it's still given to Ajay but I think it was an own goal uh, by um, Alisson because the way that the ball f comes out it would never have gone gone in but it hits Alisson goes into the net and it's 1-1 and then late on Liverpool was of course pushing for the win unless they didn't get it because the one chance by Firmino um, a really nice save by the goalie there to, uh, to give West Brom a vital one point uh, at Liverpool that they didn't, didn't expect and Liverpool missed a huge chance to put quite some distance between themselves and the competitors. And then it ends with Wolves against Spurs where are in the first minute I mean uh, Son could have scored but only gets a corner kick and the corner kick uh, comes in. Also Ben Davies who plays it out to Ndombele who takes a shot where Rui Patricio was really not well positioned and it's 1-0 Spurs. And then Spurs does what's the worst does best shut up shop and let's see uh, how it will continue from there on. And yeah, uh, I always thought that especially in the first half Spurs Still were better in the transition game and probably a little bit more dangerous, but they were hanging back quite some. Region had one opportunity where I think they had a three against two where he takes the shot but was not really, really, really good. Um, but on the, honestly, for me, the game, Wolves then had chances. I think there was uh, one for Fabio Silva where he just uh, hits the outside of the net uh, and Poland also has a good chance but I thought that Spurs was relatively well in control and switching systems you know when they're in defense four in the back when they're attacking three at the back so I thought this rather was rather interesting but then Region comes on and Bergwijn comes on and that kind of changed a little bit the defensive solidity for uh, Spurs I thought then suddenly there was a lot of uh, gaps between the, um, the defensive line and the midfield line and there were Wolves 
could take advantage of and uh, they then were really pressing. I really thought that at this point Spurs is just hanging on. There was a short period a bit, uh, between the 60s and, and the 70th where Spurs tried again to go a little bit on the front foot, um, you know, launch the occasional count kind of thing, and then retreat immediately back. Uh, but it didn't last for long and then Wolves were, were really really thre threatening and they eventually get the uh, deserved equalizer through uh, size in the 86th minute. Uh, then actually both teams went a little bit for the win. Um, Spurs a tad more because of course they would need that win more but um, it ends in a 1-1 one, one draw and it's again points lost for Spurs and kind of a little bit unnecessary so um, I don't want to, you know, I can appreciate the defensive tactics, but I think especially in the second half when you only a goal up and same as Liverpool, you need to press a little bit more. It seems like both managers were kind of saying, okay, let's sh shut up shop and um, let's not waste too much energy because we have to play two more games very, very soon. So with all that, uh, we still have Liverpool up top, still with three points. Could have been five because Leicester Man United dropped points with a draw against each other. Everton move, moving up, so um, not so the distances there remained the same in a way. Uh, Spurs now moves up despite the draw, but you know, many, 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 many draws and then many top teams also losing, like Chelsea and Southampton uh, draw, draw, draw points. So teams can move up and we have now Spurs ahead of City, then Aston Villa is also in, in there. Two games less and you know where this leads me. This leads me to very soon adjust, but I just want to see the current standings because Arsenal, despite the win, did not move in position, but you see already they have now a four-point cushion to the bottom five, which is rather uh, good for them. If you look at the overall, we see Liverpool still has kind of the gap but then from 29 up uh, from Everton up until I was uh, Southampton the teams are within four points so it's very 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 close then there's the midfield um, West Ham to Arsenal I think and then the bottom five let's adjust the standings to get a little bit of a, a bad, better feel of what these uh, numbers mean um, you know with uh, when we adjust divide by games played and we see that Aston Villa actually moves up into third spot at the moment uh, with Leicester moving down also Spurs moving down uh, City remaining still in sixth uh, and also on the bottom Burnley and Brighton switch spots everything else remains the same uh, we have another round coming because they're crazy in England. I have to say the Chelsea Aston Villa matchup very intriguing at the moment for me. Also Everton Manchester City. Everton needs to prove themselves there. Uh, we said already also Arsenal needs to back up their win over Chelsea with a win at Brighton uh, or uh, probably then uh, duel at the bottom Burnley Sheffield. Um, United Wolves I also want to see if that can uh, go places and Spurs and Liverpool just need to win their games. I think these are now for them already must wins. Um, and going back one more time to the adjusted table, just we look at the chances, uh, you already saw it there. Due to City winning and Liverpool dropping uh, points, we have now City again being favoured for the championship just slightly over Liverpool. So I find this also rather interesting and Arsenal would be there instead of West Ham. That was it. Let me know what you thought about this round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I gave you a little preview here already. I will do this maybe a little bit more official. I put finally the pictures up there. Maybe you've seen it, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!